is uh, oh, that's, that's fast as a big It's coming up, boss. here let's talk a little bit about how I like fish a spoon I mean there's so many of them though Dude, there's like hundreds of fish here God dang. <laughs> dude he locked it so good there's a fish streaking over the top right there there's a few fish down there on the bottom Everybody's been kind of interested to know what's the setup. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the setup I like to use on my spoon and a little bit about my history on fishing spoon. Dude, my dad was like, he was all about this big hunk of lead when I was a kid. One thing that makes it interesting, you know, it's easy. When you're fishing a spoon, it's really all about finding fish. Once you find a fish, you drop this big hunk of lead down there, you hop it a couple times, and pretty much, that's really all it is to it. It's really not a whole lot of magic, not a lot to tell you about when it talks about hook, line, and sinker on this particular video, but the biggest part of spoon fishing is finding the fish, which leads me to one of the things that I find is most fascinating and interesting about my pops growing up back in the day. I um, I was born in the 80s. I'm an 80s baby, right? My dad was it was really big in the tournament fishing during the 80s. And he used to fish a spoon a lot when I was, when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we, we fished it a lot. Matter of fact, I'm gonna try to show you some of the homemade spoons that we used when I was a kid too. I still got some of those. But the handmade spoon that I grew up using is this one right here. This is Mr. Harder's spoon from back in the day and I've only got a couple more left here there's another one that by far is my favorite color it's my favorite color to the point where I don't even like to use them we call that multicolor is what we call it here in South Carolina um, you'll never find another bait period with that particular color pattern on it in my area it's just a just a bait that works really well and before we had a drop shot and before we did what we call in the in the 90s a doodle worm and way before we started drop shotting this was the bait that we used to catch fish in 20 25 30 foot of water now with that being said you got to remember in the 80s even the early 90s we didn't have graphs on the front my dad actually used to go and find these places he had a paper graph on the console you would go around and you would find bait fish, find structure, whatever you could find that you found at home looking at a paper map. You go out on the lake and you try to figure out where that exact, that exact structure was. And then you got up on the front when you actually started fishing, you were actually using a flasher. And he could tell when there was bait under him. He could tell when a fish was on the bottom. He could see his bait go down all on a flasher. This little 7 8 inch spoon on a flasher. So that's pretty interesting, I think. But it's a technique, age-old technique that I never forgot. I never put it down. I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's obviously still catches a lot of fish. It's a fun way to fish because you're gonna catch a lot of fish when you put a spoon in your hand. This is my chicken spoon rod, six six. This is a medium heavy favorite Defender series right there. There's the reel. You can check it out, Abu Garcia. This is the Abu Garcia SX Revo XX. Ooh, I can't say it. A Revo SX 6.6 to, gear, 6 6 to 1 gear ratio reel. That's what I'm using. 25 pound test, fluorocarbon, that's 25 pound test, red label from Seaguar. I'll leave a link in the description box for all the equipment that I mentioned here. That's a good guy right there. Probably the most important thing that I can tell you when, <clears throat> when you're talking about fishing a spoon is the line. I've learned over the years, the bigger the line you use on a spoon, the better. In this situation, limp is a bad deal. You want your line to be fairly stiff so it doesn't recoil and get around the uh, get hooks of your bait. It's terribly aggravating. So I'm using 25 pound test Seaguar Red Label is what I like to use here. This is a War Eagle 7 8 white spoon. You've seen me fish it already. Only tweak that I do 
to it. I don't really care for a feather hook because that makes it fall slower. And then when I see fish on the graph, I want to get it down. I throw just a regular hook. Let's look at the hook that I like to use. So well, this is the number two. This is the number two ST46TN, two times strong. I like to use this hook a lot. You know, you would think with a jig and spoon because it is kind of hard to get hooked up on it that maybe a bigger hook would help you. Um, but I'm not so sure that that's not really correct. A number two is a really good hook. Um, I think when you, with a bigger hook, you oftentimes give the fish a little bit more leverage and you only got one hook where you're talking about a jigging spoon so you got to make it count and this is a good strong hook you want a strong hook because I mean that's you're gonna hang up a lot with a jigging spoon and um, you want your hook to be a pretty durable one that guy right there does a trick this is the one that I've been using this is a number one <clears throat> and this one this particular one right here is the STY35MF and this is a size one just a little bit bigger I'll let you look at them in comparison here let's look at those hooks in comparison right here you can see the number two in comparison to the number one this is the one I'm actually fishing I like this one better for striper and I've been catching a lot of striper and not necessarily in competition if I was using this in an event I would definitely be using the number two I just feel like you can keep them pegged with that one a little bit you see with that extra wide gap that you got on the number two, you know, maybe you kind of prick them better, but also you give them a lot of leverage to get off with that extra wide gap there. When I pin him on this number one, when I snag him, there's not a lot there to play with for him to get off. So that's my preferred hook right there. So, also, one thing you need to remember when you're fishing a jigging spoon, it is very important. This is the number one thing that I see people mess up with when fishing a jigging spoon, is you have to maintain vertical line position. You don't want to be jerking that spoon off to the side. I don't pitch it out from the boat. I almost, all well, I always, unless I just can't, I keep mine right vertical that does two things that's going to keep you from getting snagged if you're if you're fishing a jigging spoon around standing timber and you're pulling that spoon sideways 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 you're going to hang 90 percent of the time but you keep it vertical and you're fishing in timber you're just making that spoon go up and down in the timber and you're not going to snag this is going to be an extremely disappointing video for, for some of you guys that like to get extremely technical so one of the kids that was fishing with me yesterday used this one. I used the white one. They both caught just as many fish, even though that one is really, really ugly in my opinion. I'll show you uh, a couple of the others. This is my little box of spoons and hair jigs, which is just something I like to use this time of year. You can see, well, I'll, I'll also use like a chrome one as well, like the old Hopkins. All three of these are all, um, all three are War Eagle spoons. I've grown to like those. I know the War Eagle is 7 8 ounce. There's also a half ounce. And then occasionally I'll use these really small ones. This is a Cotton Cordell CC spoon. I'll use these occasionally too. When they get on that really small shad in the fall, that's the one to use. While I don't think there's a wrong way to work a spoon, I definitely think you want to make the bait erratic. But with that being said, you definitely can absolutely overwork the bait so i like to just do small little hops try to hop the bait off the bottom a foot anywhere between a foot a foot and a half is what i like to keep my my cadence at each cadence is different every day you got to find the cadence that works for that particular day with that fish and once you find it that's the key to getting bit on a jigging spoon oh god it's a big old bass dude You guys saw my you guys saw my electronic setup in my other video. I'll show it to you here just in case you missed that video. I'm running the new uh, Lorenz HDS Lives. Run a structure scan on here. All I'm doing is idling around on these little knobs and corners around points. I'll idle around some of these ditches. I'll look at the mapping. Just kind of you see I'm kind of following along the contour of that little ditch there. That's all I'm doing and looking for balls of bait, looking for little depressions. 
stuff like that so i'm using this unit predominantly but i also always like to still compare on my um 2d sonar so I'm, i got a hummingbird over here that i use just to compare sonar readings to to my side imaging readings because it, it can be hard to, to to decipher what you're looking at on the two sometimes you can see them really clearly on 2d sometimes you can see them really clearly on on 3d it just depends on how they set how they're setting up and how you're floating over them quite honestly so that's the two units i'm using on, on the console mapping is really important i'm always looking around high percentage places points depressions creek channel swings uh road beds that's the only thing we've been fishing today what i'm using up front is uh up front i'm using a uh the same hds live 12 and i'm running just the uh hdi transducer up there really high definition i can see everything i need to see with that unit up front once i find the fish once we get them located now here's the deal the most important factor when fishing a spoon we talked about this i just mentioned it when i was talking about my dad and how he used to fish it back in the day what's the most important thing is where they at where the fish at when i pull in these high percentage areas i, I look it's basically three or four places that that's really all i look around when i'm looking for fish on a spoon it was three or four places that you can always find them out on the ends of long points on in or around humps on top of or around main lake humps ditches and drains it's pretty much it you can catch some fish on the spoon predominantly it works better during the winter this time of the year water's water's not really that cold here in south carolina uh we've had some pretty extreme cold weather the last couple days and tomorrow is supposed to be really extremely cold but 50 degrees 52 I don't let water temperature tell me when the bite, when the spoon bite is working. Give a chicken spoon a try. I'm going to be fishing mine. Because I got all that bait there. 